What's up guys? In this video, my Mini Cooper is not making any boosts at all. This is the Mini Cooper that we just like completely redid all the maintenance on. And it was having boost issues before I did the maintenance. Now it's just like not making any boost at all. So I go over pretty much every single thing on these cars that can cause an issue with boost. So if you're having any issues with boost with your Mini Cooper and it's just like low on power or you got a, a half power check engine light. This is probably the video for you. It might be a little hard to follow at first, but if you watch through the entire video, you should be able to see exactly what I do every step of the way. And you should be able to fix any boost leaks that you might have. So stay tuned. Small update on the boost leak, I'll show you guys what I'm working with. So, I took this off and I stuck this in there and clamped it down. I took this gauge off of my hand pump for a radiator testing and I threaded this guy in there. And then I filled up the system after the turbo with pressure. I have that set to about 15 pounds. It seemed to hold pressure without leaking. So, took that off, ran it through the turbo, I used this radiator cap with an o-ring on it that i actually just shoved in there and it was perfect fitment i do have to hold it on for the the system to be see like because it'll blow it off so i do have to hold it on but i was able to fill up the whole system with pressure so the blow off valve's not leaking either so there is still a possibility that the blow off valve is open while driving but i'm not getting any kind of codes for that and the blow off valve kind of goes off i make about two pounds of boost and then the blow off valve, you can kind of hear it. So I don't think the issue is actually the blow off valve. I think the wastegate might be stuck open on the turbo. Could be a turbo actuator issue. Maybe the turbo actuator is stuck in this heat shield, the wastegate actuator. But really the only way to tell, the best way to tell is to take off this vacuum line and put a vacuum to the wastegate and take off this O2 sensor and put a boroscope in there and see if the wastegate is actually closing when it's supposed to. The wastegate should actually be open at zero pounds because the, the system controls how much vacuum goes to the wastegate. And then the system is actually under vacuum until it needs to open. Yeah, we really just need to see if at 15 inches of mercury, the wastegate is closed, which it should be. So I will take this out, put a boroscope in there. I need to rent one because I don't have one. All right guys, I'm trying to figure out my boost leak. So I rented a boroscope from AutoZone and I have it stuck in the O2 sensor hole. It's really hard to see. You gotta put it right on an angle like that. And then you can see the wastegate actuator. And now here, what I did was I rigged up, I made an adapter and put a vacuum line on it with a reducer that's going straight to the wastegate and I'm running 60, 60 pounds of compressed air through here to create a 15 inches of mercury vacuum. I can do it on the fly just by flipping that and we'll see that the wastegate actuator really appears to be working perfectly fine. And it's hard to see if it's sealing 100% but it looks like it probably is. I got the boroscope, the boroscope up close to the side, but I couldn't really see a gap. Maybe it's not a perfect seal, and maybe it's a little bit different when there's exhaust running through the car, but the actuator is holding vacuum. So this is vacuum on the wastegate actuator and you can see that it's holding just fine so that there's nothing wrong with the actuator. If anything, there might be something wrong with the wastegate flap if it's not sealing exactly or it's being blown back open, but I don't really think that's it. So the next thing I'm going to do is put everything back together and I'm going to hook this gauge up to the vacuum line that goes to the wastegate and start the car and make sure that it's reading vacuum properly. All right, so I got to do some digging to see if this could actually be the problem. But I'm hooked up to the wastegate vacuum line right now. And 
I'm not seeing any vacuum at all. Okay, so I feel like that should be closed at idle. So I don't think that this should necessarily be zero when the car's idling, but this is the vacuum pump right here and it generates vacuum rather than getting it from the intake manifold. And I don't really know why they don't get it from the intake manifold, but there's lines that run underneath here and run underneath the intake manifold that go to a wastegate solenoid and then run back to the blow off valve and the wastegate. I could be saying some of that wrong. And so it's when you're running the car, this isn't gonna show what you would normally see on a normal, normal boosted car where you see vacuum and boost. I think one good way to determine what's going on would be if you knew exactly how the system worked and then drive around with a, like put a little T right here, run this back to the wastegate and then run a vacuum gauge off of that and drive around reading the vacuum and just making sure everything works right. But I don't know what it's supposed to read. So I think I'm just gonna end up taking everything apart, taking out the intake manifold and just looking at all the vacuum lines and just making sure they're all in good shape I have a feeling that there's something wrong back there and that's what's causing all of these problems. All right, I'm pretty sure I actually just found the problem. So this is the vacuum line that runs back that goes, this goes to the wastegate. And I decided that I was just gonna pull vacuum on that and see if it can hold vacuum. Because if it can't, then that's obviously what's causing the leak. And if we look at this, let me close this it immediately doesn't hold vacuum. So all of the vacuum is, is leaking out. So we have to follow this line and figure out where the tear is. All right guys, we are working on the Mini Cooper again, and we're gonna see if we can figure out this boost leak. So as you saw before, I checked that the whole system is able to hold pressure. I also checked the wastegate actuator and the wastegate flapper. Everything seems to be working perfectly fine. Then I tried to pull vacuum on the vacuum line that runs to the wastegate and I was unable to do so. So I think there's a problem with that vacuum line or the vacuum system that goes to the wastegate. So the, the thing that sucks is to check that, you have to pull off the intake manifold. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I ordered new in intake manifold gaskets. They're dirt cheap, like six bucks, I think, for like Felpro ones. And they are reusable. So if you've replaced them recently, you can pull off the intake manifold and put it back on. It's not gonna be any issue, but I'm gonna pull the intake manifold off so I can check those lines and see what's going on. Okay, I think I found the problem, but not necessarily the solution. So here's the thing that generates the vacuum. And that's got a line that goes right here. It's this smaller line, which goes right there, which goes right here. And if we follow that, it gets bigger right here. And then we follow it all the way down. We we'll follow this line all the way down, all the way down. It's not connected to anything. So there's our problem. I don't know where it's supposed to connect to though. So I'll figure that out and then I'll let you guys know. All right, I figured it out. I'm gonna figure out what this thing is, but if we look down here, there's this thing, got a little insulation next to it. There's these two nipples. That line is supposed to run to this one. And then this one is another line that runs to this guy. And then this runs to the wastegate. Okay, so it turns out that's called the vacuum reservoir and it holds more vacuum than what would just be in the lines themselves. I really don't like this design. I especially don't like the location of that. I feel like it should be like over here somewhere accessible, but that's all right. It'd be kind of cool to see in the future if like with an aftermarket turbo and manifold, if you could just run like a normal wastegate and then I have like this vacuum adapter that goes to my blow off valve and you could run something similar like that to the wastegate 
or at, have like a tap directly in the turbo and just run it straight from the turbo. That'd be really cool. I wonder if anybody's ever done that, probably. But I'm gonna go ahead and hook this back up as it's supposed to be from the factory and put everything back together, see if we have boost. I'm also going to put some zip ties on those lines so that they don't, they don't fall off again. They don't have clamps or anything and I wonder if they were like that from the factory or not. I went to AutoZone as I normally do to get vacuum line and they brought me to the part of the shop that has all of the vacuum line in it. And they had almost no vacuum line in any size. Um, and I asked them about it and they were like, yeah, we just haven't gotten a shipment in a long time. And I don't know if all AutoZones are like that, but I find that kind of weird. But I went into my basement and dug through my boxes and I actually found some that came with a Turbo Smart Boost controller that I have. So I'm using that and I put this little protective sleeve on it that was on the old one. The old one was actually mostly plastic with little rubber ends on the end. And this section right here is like disintegrating. It's all gooey and, and really soft. I don't even know if that's like OEM, but I think somebody might have replaced it. I don't even know. Either way, uh, I'm not gonna use this plastic cause that could be brittle too. I'm just gonna use full vacuum line. I was gonna replace the other vacuum line too, just for peace of mind, but that one's in really good shape and I'm just not doing it because I couldn't buy any and I don't have enough. So I'm only doing the one that's bad and hopefully that doesn't come back to bite me. I don't think that it will. But yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and install this and use zip ties to actually like clamp it down. All right, so I've hooked up the new line to this pressure tester and I pulled vacuum on the system and it's holding vacuum on one end, like basically through the canister to the wastegate actuator is holding vacuum. Then I tried plugging the wastegate vacuum line up into this and pulling vacuum on it again and I did not pull any vacuum. Did some looking up and found that even with a new valve, it will not pull vacuum on that side unless the valve is activated. So really the only way to tell that besides like putting power to it manually would be to start the car with everything hooked up and plug the wastegate line into your vacuum gauge and make sure that you're reading vacuum. If you're not reading vacuum, then you have a leak there. Obviously, this is something that you would want to do before taking everything apart. But if you don't have vacuum going from the vacuum pump to the canister, you're also not gonna have vacuum on that line. So. That's like the first thing I would check is to try pulling vacuum on the line that goes from the vacuum pump to the canister because you know you got to take it apart anyway. So I'm just going to check the line itself going to the wastegate and make sure that I can get vacuum on that. And if it doesn't work when I put it back together, then the, the wastegate actuator must be bad. All right, I really don't know what's going on with my recordings, but the whole thing is together. I guess it didn't record but I'm gonna start it and see if it works. One thing is that the intake manifold, one of the spots where the nut goes is cracked and that makes me a little bit uncomfortable. I had a hard time torquing everything down because of that. I feel like that one is way too tight even though I did the correct torque specs, but it was like cracking as I was tightening it. So, oh, I don't know, but I'm gonna fix that when I take the intake manifold off to do the uh, walnut blasting, which definitely needs to be done. I'm gonna start this thing. I can't test drive it yet because I need to fix, um, the rear left brake caliper is is uh, dragging really, really bad. I could smell like burning brakes on the freeway the other day. So I'm gonna take that off and hope that maybe it's just like a sliding pin that's stuck and get that out um, and grease it back up and put it together. But there's a small chance that I need a new caliper. If I do need a new caliper, I should still be able to test drive this tonight to at least see if it's making boost, but I won't wanna take it too far. I'm gonna fix that caliper really quick and then I'll catch back up with you guys. All right guys, I'm on the freeway testing the car out. This is the next day. Um, I figured out the caliper issue was actually just the e-brake cable was sticking, so I disconnected that for now. I'm gonna have to replace that cable. Um, even with the one side connected, it's like the other side doesn't really work anymore. So we definitely need to figure that out, but I'm gonna order a replacement cable. As far as boost goes, it's still rubber banding a little bit. Right now it's running full boost for some reason, but I test drove it yesterday and I was running about eight pounds. Um, the thing that I have shows like actual full atmosphere pressure. So you have to subtract 14.7 to be able to see like what boost you're running. So I believe it says about 26 pounds is the max. And I think that's 12 pounds of boost ish. Um, so here I'll do a little pull so you guys can see.
So as you can see, it actually only ran 23 pounds there, which is, I believe, about 10 pounds, which is still pretty decent, but yeah, I don't know. And it, it seems like I can't really hold temperature. When the car's at like 200 something degrees, it's running full boost, I think. Right now it's at 172 degrees, so it's not running as much boost. I don't know. I don't know. Don't really know what the issue is, but it did this before the boost completely stopped working. So if any of you have an idea of what's going on, I'm probably gonna get a smoke machine and like actually smoke test it to see if I have any intake leaks. And then maybe the wastegate flapper isn't sealing perfectly, but really the only way I'm gonna know for sure is if I take the downpipe off and look at it. So if you guys know what it might be, let me know. But either way, the car is pulling pretty good now. It's definitely a lot more drivable. It's not scary slow. So I'm pretty happy. But yeah. It's been a while after I recorded all of this and I haven't really been having any boost issues at all ever since I made this video. It seems to consistently hit full boost now. I'm not really sure what changed, but I'm really happy with it. And I hope this video helped you out. If it did, please consider subscribing to the channel. I have so much more content coming out, mostly civic content, but some mini content too. I'm planning on completely redoing this car. All of the mods are, are kind of old and tired. So I just want to freshen this car up and make it really, really nice. So that's all going to be on this channel. Thank you guys so much for watching. Peace out.